we are going to today talk about, well, we can open it up to whatever, but we're going to start with play action pass and some concepts that we utilize uh, mostly off our inside zone. We'll touch a little bit about off of our, our power game. We didn't do a lot of it this past season. And then we'll touch a little bit about some of the play action we do off of the jet stuff that Coach was talking about earlier. Just a couple things to, to add on to what Coach said earlier, that was some, some, some fantastic stuff, is two years ago we started utilizing the one-word plays with our offense. And we married it up with left hash, right hash, um, with team names and team mascots. For instance, we would have a left hash play in Texas, the right hash would be Longhorns. We would just flip the play. Um, what it allowed our kids to do is we carry about 24 of them, you know, total. So 48 different plays if you count left hash and right hash. Um, the thing about it is, is we use them out of the same. We have about 12 that are 12 personnel and 12 of them are 11 personnel. You know, how many times you're yelling out the one play like, shit, I got 12 personnel. But it's supposed to be 11, that kind of stuff. But a lot of our kids, you know, to, we use all team names, right? We got Texas Longhorns, San Francisco 49ers, New England Patriots, stuff that marries up with teams, okay? Um, our run plays are college teams, our pass plays are professional teams, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, talking about play action pass protections and concepts, well, we started out and it, it, we build on it throughout the season because you, you have an idea when you walk in but you never really know who you're going to be. Okay. Well, what are our most productive run schemes? For us, this last season, it was inside zone, um, a little bit of power, and some of the power rate the jet stuff. Before, it's been, you know, power was our top one. So power pass, you know, whether it was naked off power, pass, power or, or waggle off power. Um, what are our most productive run schemes? And then how can we marry up a pass play and a concept off of that? Who are we trying to affect? When we look at our play action pass, who are we trying to affect? Is it a safety? Is it the play side safety? Is it a backside safety who is really concentrating on getting downhill and, and being the cutback player on inside zone? Is it an alley player for perhaps a power pass or, or a waggle off of it? What is that person that we're trying to affect keen, right? If it's a front side safety and he's the D gap defender, if he's a D gap defender uh, in the run game, how are we going to affect him? What is he looking at? Is he looking at the tight end? Is he looking at the tackle? Is he keying the backs, you know, the back flow? All those types of things. And what we talk with our offensive line, our quarterbacks, and our running backs, it's got to look, sound, smell, feel, taste. Every sense we have, common sense is a big one for us, like the run. It's got to look like the run. How can we make it? look like the run as much as possible, okay? And the other thing is with a lot of our stuff, we try to make the protection marry up as closely as we can with the run game so our offensive linemen can play fast. We talk about making it as easy as we can for our five guys up front so they can play as fast as they can and, and not think. We want to give our players the least amount of information possible to be successful. Give our kids the least amount of information possible to be success, to, to have success. Uh, coach Meyercord, who used to uh, coach up at uh, uh, Point, no, was he Point? No, he was at uh, Stout, right? At Stout, we're talking about, listen, if you're thinking, you're stinking. Clear minds equal fast legs. And he's right, we want to let those kids play fast, okay? So we, we're going to start out with our inside zone and then the concept, the basically two base concepts that we run off our inside zone, which are pocket concepts, okay? We can get into some of the boot stuff that we do off of our inside zone in a second. But we're running inside zone, we're running out of 12 personnel, we're running out of 11 personnel, we're running out of 10 personnel. Here we are, we're running out of uh, 12 personnel, and it's just split zone, guys. On our inside zone concept, on the front side, we want to reach, run, okay? We tell our offensive lineman, we want to reach the guy in your gap. If you get him reached, press him vertical. If you cannot get him reached, we want you to turn and run him as wide as you can. Reach to run. You got three steps to figure it out, guys. First step, second step, third step. If I don't have him reached, covered up with my hat, covering his place side here, then I want to get my hand on his hip and I want to run him. Because now we're not going to get vertical movement. We want to make sure that we get horizontal movement to make the gaps that much bigger for those backers, safeties, whoever it might be, to fill. On the back side of our inside zone, we talk front side, we talk back side. So front side is center play side, 
Backside is centered backside. On the backside of our inside zone, we are full reach to cut off. We're full reach to cut off. Our philosophy on inside zone is what we're trying to do is get multiple defenders in a gap. Right? We want to get two of their guys in a gap. How we do that is based on either A, getting them reach and cut off, or we're splitting the zone with the swiper, the fullback, whoever it might be coming across. And if we're talking zone read, now we're splitting the zone by reading the defender. Okay? But here we are, we're just running base split zone. Our, our swiper, the guy who's coming back across, is kicking out the first man outside our end man. This is a terrible job by our play side receiver down here to the right. We've got formation in the boundary. He needs to push crack that safety. Because we want to make corners make tackles. They're corners for a reason. I want to attack because I can't play safety. Here we're on the same thing. Now this is one of our buzzword plays where we came out and you can see the defense kind of getting lined up later. Our quarterback, this is the first game of the year, and our quarterback didn't do a great job of trusting the other 10 guys. See how he comes up there and says something to the offensive line? You got to trust the guys understand what they're doing. So we're just running the same football player, we're on a split zone, our swiper comes back across, he kicks out the first man outside our in man. And then what we do is, once we've handed it off, we run so much zone read that instead of booting away, our quarterback attacks it downhill. That's his fake on that, not boot. Coach, what's your back's aiming point on the inside zone? Our back's aiming point on the inside zone is the play side of the, of the guard, of the play side guard. Outside leg, excuse me. Play side guard, outside leg of the play side guard. When we run zone from the from the uh, the gun when we're offset, any points right here. So we really want to press it, press it, and then get downhill. I tell the running back and the same, you guys tell them the same thing. We're not going to make a cut until we get to the heels of the offensive line. Not to where the offensive line is lined up initially, but where they're lined up. Because you know we're counting on them getting moving. Okay? When we're in the dot or the pistol. We take our outside, our inside zone backside, okay? So we really talk with that quarterback. If we're running pistol zone, you know, and we're running it to the left here, when that quarterback catches that ball, we're going to open our foot and drop to give that running back a really tight track so he can still get to the play side or the outside leg of the play side guard. You know, if the quarterback just catches it and turns like this, well, now we're never going to get to the aiming point. And that play side backer and that backside backer, they're going to mirror step, mirror step, and then rock back and make the play if we try to bend it back. You change the depth of your quarterback, whether it's guard or pistol? We do. We try to get him at heels at five when we're in the gun and heels at four when we're in the pistol. And we go round and round about it. Because when you start running inside, you the eye formation, right? Or when we're under center. The tailback heels were always at eight, right? Well, now we're in the gun. You know, and you'll see some teams, I think, uh, I don't know what they'll do now, but Oregon, they used to have that tailback slightly offset, and he was a lot deeper. They're basically running the inside zone that take, that can take the crossover step and go. You know, my thought is we're five, we're in the gun, okay? And we're about not quite three yards, so we're still at eight, so the timing's still, it isn't ideal, but the timing's still there, okay? When we're in the pistol, you know, our heels are at four, we'll have that back at six and a half, seven yards. <clears throat> so here we are again, put formation in the boundary, the same thing, the split zone, and the safety's downhill. Now there's no, he's not gonna go to the front side safety, the receiver down here in the bottom. He's looking, you can see him peek. He knows he's not gonna get there, all right, go block the corner. A really great job by our backside receiver. We talk a lot, our receivers coach, Coach Olson, does a great job of getting those receivers to buy in, to sell out for each other on every single play. Not a great job by Virgil, you gotta swear that. Virgil is a senior running back from Oak Creek. All right, so now our base concept when we start running our inside zone pass, play action pass off it, we start guys with verticals, right? Whether it's four verticals, three verticals, whatever it might be. So here, when we do this, we marry it up so it looks the same. 
I'll draw it up so you guys can see it, and then we'll watch the video. If you have questions, make sure you just shout them out. Tell me if you can't see this. All right. Go as fast as we can. So here we're running inside zone to the right. Okay? And obviously we just attach a one to the, to the number scheme to get our play action pass. But everybody's got a gap to their right, to the right, the tight end whispers to the tackle to tell him he's out. Okay? We don't want him thinking too much, so he's gonna have to leave now, but so he's gonna be out. So he's gonna step first, like it's inside, like it's outside zone or inside zone. He's gonna step and then he's releasing vertical. Okay? We're stepping, we're stepping, we're stepping. It's action. If we don't tag it with naked, right? It's tagged with seams, it's tagged with clover, whatever it might be. That lets our guys know that it's pocket protection. So our swiper's coming back across, and he's blocking this thing for inside leverage, right? It's pocket protection. Everything's blocked for inside leverage. Our tailback is selling the fake, and then he's immediately going back door. We've got great protection front side, okay? What we're worried about is we're all running inside zone, inside zone, inside zone, inside zone, where we can get multiple defenders off the edge, off the backside, protect your quarterback's backside. The quarterback is going to sell it, and then ideally he's going to work one step to his right and three steps of depth after the mesh. That gets our launch point at eight and a half yards. Our landmarks, we have three verticals. The landmarks, bottom of the numbers, bottom of the numbers, and what we tell our guys with bottom of the numbers, bottom of the numbers to the sideline, seven yards, right? Now that gives us our quarterback an opportunity to put that ball on the outside shoulder so our guy or no guy, we call this, and I'm sure a lot of you do, the lawn, stay out of the lawn if you're a receiver. The only thing that takes you to the lawn is, a, is the football, all right? Now, with our tight end, he takes a pre-snap. You got one or two. I got two. Guys, where's the void? In the middle. Take it, all right? We're here, and then he's going to work to the middle of the field. He gets one guy in the middle of the field, right? We're going to attack the middle of the field, and we're going to snap it underneath. We want to try to step on his toes. Now, I've got a clip of a slot receiver doing it, but we're going to try to step on his toes, and we're going to throw, because you're not going to run by him, guy. You're a tight end. No offense. If you could run by him, you'd be a receiver, right? you think you're sweet. You're not. You're a tight end. We still love you. But we're going to snap underneath that guy. Okay? We get four verticals off of it, which we don't a lot just because of the protection. But if we were to, say, be in something like this over here, and our, we only had one guy fit in the back side. If we had four verticals, now our landmark would be two yards outside the hash, two yards outside the hash. And this stems off when we teach our five-step vertical game, whether how many immediates we have, whether it's three or four, what the landmarks are, and that kind of stuff. So here we're in a situation where 12 personnel, we action it. I, I don't think it's a great fate by our tailback. What we tell the guy is, if you feel he could be threatening, FTF. Right? And you can take it however you want. Forget the fake, whatever the fake. Hey, man, we need the protection, okay? We need the protection first. So he's, he's getting a little antsy. But the other guy that I think that we have to do a better job of coaching, and we have to make sure that he trusts it, is your right tackle, okay? That right tackle. Go out there and get it, man. Go out there and get it. Because the only place you can't get beat is where? Outside. Go get his outside pet. Because you got your right guard coming with you, man. He's going to help you on the inside. Center's coming with you. He's going to help you on the inside. So we want to be ultra aggressive and go get the outside digit of the widest defender. That's really going to sell the play side safety. Because what are we trying to affect here? We're trying to affect the play side safety. So we got too high. Get vertical. The only thing that I, I'm a little bit concerned with our tight end is he splits them, right? Stay vertical, man. Don't split because now the backside safety, who bought like hell, what's he going to do when he figures out it's passed? Oh, you know what? Turn and burn, right? 
Turn and burn. And that's throwing blind for a quarterback. He's not worried about the backside safety. He sees a lot of green grass. <coughs> Coach, protection question. Are yes. You, are you calling your, your swipe or your H back there? Yeah, your H back. Um, do you want him going flat? Do you want him to hug the line? Aim yes. Kid depth? Yep. And we tell him at his aiming point, when it's the protection or when it's split zone, your aiming point is the inside leg of the backside guard. And we want you to dig it out. Ideally, it should look like this. Right? Because we're getting such great movement on the backside. We're counting on the movement. And if it is the play action pass off it, I want to make sure that I dig it out and get inside out to so pocket, pocket protection. So we need to be inside out on the first man outside our in man on the backside of it. So here's the same thing, we're running the seams. It's one high, so we, obviously guys, they're very worried about the post, right? <laughs> For whatever reason. So the safety's like, well, he's, the tight end's never gonna get to the middle of the field defender. So now we're working the perimeter. I, I don't like the receiver, the receiver makes a great catch and, and all that stuff, but it's a terrible route, right? He, he gets by him right up top, He get, you got him. Now you need to, you need to stack him, right? You need to stack him. Do not, whatever you do, allow that defender, whether it's DB safety, whomever it might be, don't give him a leverage point, guys. Don't allow him to be in phase. Fight the phase and get him to chase you. Because now he has no leverage whatsoever. And he, make, he makes a great play. It, it's, but like we told him at the end, you know, during Sunday watching films, like you had to make this whatever type of catch. You know, he's like, I lost the guy. Yeah, he would have scored a touchdown if you run around, run the route. Man. We're proud of you for making the play. Oh, but come on, man. Let see if I can get the tight to it. How often would you say that you're simulating that inside and tunnel to the right as opposed to going the other direction? You're simulating it to the left and the right. 50-50. Um, right? yeah. yeah, we have, I mean, I don't think it matters whether it's a right-handed quarterback or a left-handed quarterback. I think it is naturally easier when you're here and you're right-handed to drift to your right a little bit to into the full slide of the protection as opposed to being here. You know, we talk about, you know, when you go to your left, I really want you to take that left toe, screw it into the ground, one, two, now you're hitting third, you know, so you screw it into the ground, you drop back behind to get yourself, because you know you're going to the left, I need to work to my left, because the protection's working to the left. So here we are, we, we trade it with our tight end and our Y, not good by the center, right? Hey, it's full slide protection. You need to have your eyes in your gap, right? Have your eyes in your gap. This is not on the guard. This is on Garrett the center for not having his eyes in his gap and giving his guard his guard help. I, it's, it's pretty good by the right guard here. It's not very good by the tack. That does not look like he's going out to reach that guy. Now, the thing that we do do sometimes, guys, is with our tackles, and, and whether it's uh, inside zone on the front side or whether it's uh, an insertion scheme where it's block out insert, we'll pop set sometimes with the tackles to get those fives to get upfield so we can create some, some larger C gap run lanes. But this throw is hurried a little bit because <coughs> our center hangs our right guard out to drive. Because like we talked about with our tackle going out to aggressively reach that guy, our guard needs to go out to aggressively reach that guy so he can keep his eyes in his gap and then we're in good shape. <clears throat> so now we're running out of 11 personnel. It's the same concept, guys. It's the same play call. The call doesn't change. Just understand where you're at with the concept. It's three verticals, okay? Now, it's really good job by him understanding that it is basically getting to a 3D, right? It's a really good job understanding by 3D. What he doesn't do a great job of, guys, is, hey, I want you to step on his toes, all right? Step on his toes first. He got two, I mean, there's a lot of green grass out there, right? He's trying to go get it right now. He needs to be a little bit more patient. You guys have probably heard the old boy young boy story. He needs to be a little bit more patient. 
It's a really good football throw, though. Two guys coming up the edge. <laughs> Say they bring the will, right? And they bring middle of the field here. You know, he's man to man, man to man. They bring double edge pressure, right? Here. He's going to fit off the tackle's rear because the tackle's sliding, right? He's here, 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 here. He'll be here. He'll come here. We've got to protect him. We're in good shape. Now, right, we're digging this thing out. We're digging it out. You have the first thing off outside our inmate. Whoever shows first, okay? Now, the back is here and here. Who's, who's from depth? The back. The back's coming from depth. You make him run. Okay. Ideally, in an ideal situation, guys, you'd like to have this tack or the, the swiper, the tight end, the H back, whoever it might be, as he comes across. Hey, I'm zipper right here. The tackle's here. I'm here. Right. That ties the protection together, and then the back fits off the H, ties it right together. Well, we all, we talk about on the edge there. If you draw, you ride. So say he does do this. And he's tight and he stays on. It. Right, the will comes underneath. Hey, you're from depth. You're more athletic. You you adjust and you you take care. You can't you can't allow them to be robots. The thing I like about it, guys, is it's really really easy. The protection's easy. We're sliding. We're split zone. We're coming back across and we're rolling. Here it is from the tight. We're too soft up front. This does not look like a run football play. Here we run the same thing again. We're out of 12 personnel. It's the exact same play it seems. It's kind of hard to see with the shadow down here, but this is not good. This is not good by Todd. His, his alignment's great. He knows he's got press, but he takes the easy way out. He tries it out running, and now he can't stack him early enough. He stacks him late. For us, we get a, they do a nice job calling pass interference for us, right? The safety, they go from basically too high. The backside safety is the cutback player. He's downhill right now. I'd like to see our tight end keep running across. Play side safety's face. Keep running across his face. Now the thing about it is, guys, is we can talk all we want. The protection is the main thing, right? And you know and I know that we can drop all we want, but it's Jimmy's and Joe's that make plays, right? So what we're doing is we're getting the safeties out of it, and we're getting isolation one on one on the perimeter, right? If it's one high. If it's too high, we have a chance to split it with the tight end. Really, and then really influence that safety. But that's why, you know, you have a big target like Ty, who will be a senior for us. Um, he's from, um, I can't remember the high school he's from here in Wisconsin. And then in a couple of years, we got the guy from town here. That he'll be able to take, he'll take advantage of that isolation on the corner, the big target down the middle. So now we come back, and our next concept off of it is our clover concept. Clover is deep over, okay? So with our deep over concept, we tag who's got the clover. And it's a middle of the field open, middle of the field closed concept for us. So here we're at 12 personnel. We, this is our Z, our Y, our X, our H, our tailback. Now we would call Z Clover. So Z Clover is deep over. So we're, we're going to run in like we're going to crack the safety, get vertical and over. We're not definite, but we're about 20, okay? 
I want you to run in for four like you're going to try to cut a guy off or go crack a guy. I want you to climb over top of the linebackers, over top of backer depth, and we're trying to get to the backside hash at 20. Our tight end steps like it's inside zone. He's got the shallow at four. Guys, it's so critical. I don't care how much green grass is out there, you can't get deeper than four. We've got to have space. Space is the key. The complement to the clover route is the post. Okay? If we called X clover, Z would have the post, right? We call Z clover, X has got the post. Now, I don't think it's a necessity, but I think it helps. It depends on the IQ of your kids. We teach one high, two high. If the middle of the field's open, you've got a post, okay? Guys, if the middle of the field's closed, right, it's either cover three or cover one, right? If it's one high safety, what are they taking away? The post. So don't run a post, right? They're taking away the post, guys. Don't run a post. There's a post player. So then we have a, and Coach called it the more, more, count, more route, whatever you want to call it. We call it a Margo, a mandatory outside release go. You've got a Margo route. It's just easier to say Margo than Morgo, okay? So here we're running it. We've got the middle of the field. There's nobody there. Well, it's one high in the middle of the field. So we've got Z Clover. Z's got the Clover. Hey, it's one high. I got the Margo. Got the shallow. Protection's the same. Now, here, he does a, he, I don't, it's a Margo route. So if it's a Margo, it's mandatory outside release go, right? So now the principles that we talked about the lawn, the lawn before, doesn't matter. So it's, it's I don't care if the corner is standing next to the sticks, right? It's one high, you've got the Margo. You gotta go. So here, him getting in the lawn, whoops, him getting in the lawn, it's not, it doesn't bother me, it's okay. It's not, we can see it from the tight, it's not a great job by the tailback. So we trade it over, we're out of the pistol. So now guys, the same thing we talked about the pistol is no different than the gun for the back, okay? You still need to end up here. So we're gonna sell it downhill and here. Once again, we feel like it's double edged. I got to go right now. FTF, man. Get there. I can see right now, if our running back, pre-snap, said, you know what? We can't fake this because I've got a five and a wide nine because it's an odd front, right? He does a really good job. You can see his eyes. It's a good job by the quarterback. Now, what we talked about earlier, on the one that we got the pass interference call, the receiver did not do a great job of stacking the defender. Here, that defender's got no leverage whatsoever. There's no chance he can cut the guy off, so he does a nice job of stacking. Uh, so this one, we don't do a great job. Our quarterback gets against me. He sees it. He sees the safety sitting at seven yards. So now we're running it off jet motion, okay? And, and it's totally screwed up. But now it's X Clover, okay? We designed this one with X Clover off our, our jet stuff. It's still split the zone. The protection doesn't change. Still coming back across. He's here. He's there. So this is our Z. This is our X. So now this one is called X Clover. We're in, we're up, we're over. He goes on the jet to the flare. So now you still get your high low. Okay? You still have your high low. Backfield action is terrible. But the middle of the field's open, guys, so take it. 
switch the quarterback's footwork, he sticks him in the belly, and then he's taking three? Yeah, so, you know, whatever, it's coming from this side or it's coming from this side, because here he's one, two, it's basically two. It's crossover stick, because now your depth is eight, you know, eight, eight, eight to eight and a half yards. That's what we want our launch point to be. <clears throat> What I want is I want the quarterback to tie it up, right? But our jet boat, he's going right in front of him. He's going right in front of him. We tag it with, uh, you know, so this would be, for instance, this is Queen, your right, hip, 122 X clover, okay? Anytime that we have a hip motion, whether it's, that's just what we call our jet motion, hip or zip or rip or tip or hip or whatever it might be, there's always a fake. So the kids always know, hey, hey, we hear hip, there's going to be a match or a fake between our receiver and our quarterback. So the back has to pause. But yeah, so the ball should be snapped right there, or right when he gets to the tackle, is where we tell him to snap the football. <laughs> so he jacks it up. Well, what we talked about earlier, when you asked the question about the, the running back, This happens a lot, guys. This happens a lot. So as we tell our running back to, to figure it out and fix this, right, a lot of the times, and you guys who coach defense, if your linebacker gets caught in the gray area, right, on play action pass, what do you tell him to do? Hey, it's gray. Go make a play, dude. Right? So we'll see that a lot. Where it, 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 he blitzed. No, he didn't. And he bought I mean, it was really good action. He bought it. Sometimes we're not going to have a hat for him, sometimes we are. The back does a nice job of keeping his head on a swivel, taking that guy up to the quarterback. I don't think he would have altered the throw at all, but he just want to keep hits off the cats. So if your quarterback tended up right, you want a flare by the jet? Or yes, a flare by the jet. Because now that becomes our, yep, no different if we would have had the shallow coming from over here. It's not essential, guys. It's not essential to have the shallow on the same side. <coughs> as the clover when they end up there. <clears throat> but it sure is nice to have that three-tier high-low read. I think as if your quarterback's a little bit older and he understands where you get to the third, because we're looking for the big play, guys, right? We all are. Whether it's the post, the seam, the clover, and if it ain't there, we'll take the shot, right? We'll take the shot. The better your quarterback gets, the more complex you can be with the formation so he understands where his shallow is going to end up. You know, if you got a guy who's a pretty, you know, who's got a run down, you want to make sure it's all right there in front of his face. You know, a guy who can get, it's okay, it's coming from here, I got to go to the other side. I got to kick step and get it out. I think in, in uh, two years, we threw it to the tight end or the shit or the flare, whoever it might be, I think once. Right? You know the quarterbacks, what do they want? They want the big play, right? They want the home run. We do huddle guys. We do also uh, some no huddle, some fast no stuff. The coach called it his two minute offense, we call it fast no. Um, we also do some tempo plays with the one word plays. You know, we do the split cadence and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> when we huddle, we do, some, we do a lot of trading, shifting, motioning, okay? That's our tempo when we huddle. And this was the tight for that game because the wind was blowing so hard. They wouldn't get it in the cherry picker. But now they're too high. They're a 4-2-5, they're a, a true 4-2-5, so you got two safeties. All right, so now we run double clovers, okay? Now we're running double clovers. So here we've got X and H. So here's our X. Here's our H. Excuse me. Here's our Z, our H, our X. So we've got Z and H clover. So Z is on the clover. H is on the clover. It's a two high. So now X has got the post. 
This isn't something that we run early in the game. It's not. We will run our normal action. We'll run some different zone read plays off this. Just because we've got, we don't have an out. There is no tight end. There's no shallow. We take the shallow away. We're going big. The nice thing about it is, guys, if you know that you're going to get in a situation where they're only going to rush four, possibly five, because that's all you've got to handle it, is you can really attack both safeties, right? We've got the action at the safety down here to the bottom. Our receiver does a nice job looking like he's going to crack him. He's up. He's over. We talk right over left in our offense. So the right guy's always going over top to the left guy. We have a three or four different mesh concepts that we do the same thing. No confusion. Not a great football throw. We want to throw the post to the goal post, guys. That's why they call it a post. But those double clovers, in my opinion, really do a great job when you get a dump on two high, basically quarters, right? And, you, and they're trying to get nine guys in the box and, and cheat, do a great job of attacking both those safeties. But here again, there's, a, there's the guy, right? Once he figures it out, it's play action. <clears throat> he runs. You know, our, our running back who picked it up the last time was a senior, right? This guy right here is a junior. He doesn't have his head in the game to understand where the, where the leakage can come from. I think another, uh, if you're... You're talking about the tackle bottom on the back side? Yeah. Yeah. You can, I mean, that's another way to do it, right? It's another way to do it. It all depends on what the reason, you know, what the reason. I, I, I completely agree. Coach is talking about, let me draw it here on the computer, is what you could do is you could insert the protection, right? You could insert it. You could slide it here, slide it here, slide it here, slide it here. You could have your tackle even step slightly down and turn out on this guy. Have your swiper insert here in the back, you know, fake it, and then insert here, and then you've got basically bobslide protection. All right. I mean, you can draw it up where it could be if they had a three technique on the back side. Now we're Bob, Bob, and now we insert here, and we insert there. The reason that it works for us, my, and what we've been doing that is, what is this mimicking for us? Zone read, right? Zone read. We run, we run split back zone read a ton, right? So the five techniques, very, very rarely the defense have been pin their ears back and go, okay? Usually when that tackle steps down, they're seeing a swiper, they're gonna A, try to spill it, right, because they think it's split zone, or B, step and squeeze, because they think it's zone read. We do not run a lot of zone read where we read the linebacker. So here we got the same play that we ran earlier out of 12 personnel versus the same football team. Okay, so now they get from, they, this is a good job by this cat, because they go basically from, they bring his own pressure, right? They go from one high to two high. He's still not patient enough to bend it underneath the safety. But our X receiver up top, it's too high to him from on the snap. It, we're not quite at that level where we can see that they're adjusting on the fly when you're running away from it to go, oh, they're going to one high. Keep it a margo. Hey, man, you're, you're committed to the post. Run the post. We'll live with it. We'll live with it. Two things. Number one, we talked about making sure we snap it underneath his toes, right? Because we don't want this guy who sees, oh, it's passed. Turn and burn and get underneath and make a play in that quarterback's blind spot. Okay, so now the next thing off of our inside zone is we run a ton of boot, okay? And I'm sure, I don't know how many of you guys run inside zone and run naked and all that kind of stuff off of it. But it's a pretty easy concept for us We'll start it out at 12 personnel, and I'll get you to, to 11 personnel and one expanded, two expanded. 
but we're talking boot. All right, so we attach our inside zone. So we call the first one is 22. We're running inside zone to the right, okay? So we called 122, and then we tagged it with seams, or we tagged it with X or Z clover, or whatever it might be, right? And that told everybody that it was pocket protection. All right, now we run inside zone. So now we go 122, and we tag it with naked. Now, naked tells our guys, now we're out of pocket. We're out of pocket on the protection. It also tells this guy <coughs> that it's naked, okay? So we have play side, we have back side. Same thing up front with the, this. It doesn't change for these guys right here. It's inside zone to the right. Simple, right? Where do you want to lose your guy? That way, whether it was naked or not. Now it changes the naked is basically the concept for everybody else. On the back side, we have one expanded. Okay? We have one expanded. We have one expanded, two expanded rule. One expanded, we've got what we call a stretch route, guys, where we're working to the bottom of the numbers. 15 to 12, we're running a stretch route. I know a lot of people run a comeback. I, I like to let the receiver have vision the entire time, right? So if the ball's inside over here, and we're running the old school comeback, where we get to 15, and we run the corner to 18, and then we're coming right back down, right? It's a great spot for the quarterback. It's a great spot for the quarterback. Our stretch route is we run to 15, we pivot off our outside foot, we're back down. I think it's a little quicker and a little bit easier for our quarterbacks. And if you got up here and argued about it, you like to come back or out better, I, I wouldn't be able to really argue with you, with you that much. But we, the comeback is the only route that we run. The only time we run a comeback is in boot, in our offense. We run these stretch routes in about 10 or 12 different concepts, okay? So this is naked. We're still stepping. Play side on inside zone with our tight end. He's working 10 yards by the numbers. 10 yards by the numbers. I don't care if you run over backers. I don't care if you run under the backers. Don't run through the backers, right? Do not be a magnet. I want you to get sell inside zone for a step, and then 10 yards by the numbers. Be there as fast as you can, man. You're, you know what's on fire, and the bucket of water's right there. Backside. Play side. We've got the post, all right? Now, with our swiper, our H-back, he is... Digging it out, right? Like he's gonna, like he's gonna dig that guy out. Like he's gonna dig him out. His aim point's the same. We're the inside leg of the back of the backside guard. We're gonna dig it out. And this is key, guys. You've got to make sure that the defensive end, the first man outside our end man on the backside, goes inside of you. He has got to go inside of you because if he doesn't, our quarterback cannot get out of pocket. Okay? He cannot get out of pocket. <laughs> So we're really going to try to sell this guy to get him to dig it out, and then we're into the flat at four. All right? What I tell, we tell the quarterback, top down. We're working that thing top down. Stretch to tight end to fullback. Okay? Whether we're on the pistol or the gun, whatever it might be, our aiming point is the outside leg of the guard, and we tell the running back on this play, you're a garbage man, you're working inside out. You work inside out. For the protection, because we're booting away, and you gotta go. The quarterback, I don't give him a depth. We talk about tempo, okay? From the mesh, I want you to run as fast as you can, okay? From the mesh, after the mesh, after the quarterback leaves you, run as fast as you can. If you have a guy in your face, get big and throw. So if we're here, then I'm gonna gas pedal and run as fast as I can, and as to get around whomever might be there, or if there's no one there, run as fast as you can downhill. Run as fast as you can downhill. I don't worry about, you know, set their feet and shoulder. No, run as fast as you can. You have a football in your hand. You just happen to get to throw it. Don't worry about your feet. Run as fast as you can. They'll figure themselves out. If there is a guy that maybe they bring two off the edge or whatever it might be, get big. And Because if, if there's a guy in your face who's covering the, the H, nobody. And if they have somebody doing that, it's a horrible call by me. Trust me. 
Trust me. I'm not going to yell at you if you throw an interception because there's a dude in your face. You get big and dump it to your fullback. That, that's on me. That's not on you. That's a bad call. Alright, so here we are. We also have this play in our offense as a, as a tempo play, one of those one word calls. So this defensive end is upfield. Our H does a nice job. He's digging it out. He sees he's up there. He gets outside. And that's what we talk about getting big. The guy got in your face, get big. And we drill this with our quarterbacks. We, this is a day one install for us. And we drill it once a week. Two or three minutes, once a week, just getting big from all different weird angles, guys. Because you know sometimes you got to throw it underneath, you got to get up really tall and, and you know just lay it in there. But well, we drill it for two or three minutes every day. So now, I think we've got two expanded up here. Okay, so now the next the next concept, not concept, but the change of the concept is based on how many guys are out here. If we have a tight end on the back side, we still have one expanded, okay? If that's the case, we don't usually have a swiper. If we do, we have to tag it with something different. But then now we're down, we're slam flat, right? No big deal. If we're in a situation where like we're in this formation, we've got this and this, just like this one. Now I'm going to expand it. Too expanded. Guys, we can't run a comeback with this guy right here, right? It's just not enough room. So what we tell our outside receiver is now he has the Margo, mandatory outside release go, and now our inside receiver has what we call a doubt route, a deep out route. You have a stem, deep out route. We tell our H receiver, you have a two-step stem inside. So we're working two steps inside, we're eight to 10 on the speed out. Eight to 10 on the speed out, or the deep out, okay? Eight to 10 on the deep out. The, bet, the number one coaching point for this guy right here, is if you come out at eight, if you start your speed out at eight, you better be flat at 10. If you come out at six, you better be flat at eight. Guys, if you come out at four, you better be flat at six. Because if your route, and you come out at six, and you're like, oh, I gotta get to 10, and it looks like this, it is getting undercut by an alley defender, and it's gonna get picked, and now our quarterback's gotta make a tackle. That's not good news for us, okay? That, that your hard, fast rule, is you've got two yards to flatten out, guys. You got, hey, if it's two, you better be at four. The stem, the reason that we stem it two steps inside is because of the mesh, okay? That's the reason we step it two, step, two yards inside of the guy. But it is eight to 10 on the speed out, on the deep out. So here we run it off tempo. Backside guy's still got the post. <coughs> the only time that we've thrown the post on the backside guys is when we, we've, from the booth, someone said, hey, listen, they don't even, they don't even know he's there, okay? We don't, we don't even know he's there. And then guys, by that time, we throw the clover out off of it, okay? Because we can't protect it if we leave the back out or the H back out. But it's a really nice job by the H, making sure that guy goes underneath him. It's a good job by the quarterback getting big. And then it's a really good job by our receivers being plus one players downfield. Right? And being a great teammate and blocking for your guy downfield. So now we're running the inside zone week. Okay? We're running the inside zone week. Nothing's really different. It's, it's not read or anything like that. And then our action off of it is I'll, I'll get to the next clip. <clears throat> and we run the we run inside zone week on Temple as well, so you can see the camera didn't get it all the way. But you know, we're getting this guy cut off, we're kind of to here, we're kind of to that guy. He's turning on his guy, he's the unblocked player. But you can see the backside guy screaming it as the cutback player, right? Okay, then off the football play, we run basically a naked pin. So if we run inside zone or, or outside zone, 
We're on an inside zone here. We're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. We call it naked, and then we call it pin. And that talks to this guy that he's pinning, the backside guy. Naked tells everybody it's out of pocket, right? Pin tells the tight end on the backside that he's got to pin the edge defender. If he's inside, it's easy, man. We're just pin blocking him, and then we're booting out of it, right? If he's there, it sucks. I'm not kidding, right? It sucks. So we, we'll reach him and live with it. Okay, you've got the edge player. If he lines up way out here, it's a really bad, bad call, right? If he lines up outside of you, it's still not a great call, but we can handle it. We can get uh, hands on that guy. Now, we tag different concepts with it. This is crush. All right, with crush, we run that stretch route and the smash route. Okay? That, we, you can call it whatever smash, China, flag, whatever it might be. This is our crush concept, okay? We also run our sail concept, which is a Margo and a two step doubt route, right? That stem doubt route, like we do off the backside of two expanded on boot. So we can tag it with a couple different things. <coughs> It's a really nice job of our, of our receiver up top on a stem, on a stem on this crush route. So watch what it does to the safety. The backside safety thinks he's getting cut off by him on the run play. Right, he sees him inside, gets him to flip his hips. Not a great throw, <coughs> great catch. And the reason the throw is not very good is our quarterback is worried about bad guys. And then you need to run as fast as you can. Just run as fast as you can. I tell the quarterbacks when we coach sprint out, when we coach boot, when we're on the move, your ball will go where your body goes. Your ball goes where your body goes, as fast or as slow as your body goes. Right? You're on the sprint out, and you throw it, and you slow down, what's that ball going to do? It's going to sail. You're on the sprint out, and you throw it, you speed up, where's it going to go? It's going to skip on the ground. Your temple's got to remain the same. So if you know that you really got to get a shot in there, right? You really got to rip that thing. You better be sprinting from the get-go, and you better sprint all the way through the finish of the throw. If you're going to know that you've got lofted lot in there, you better time it up, lofted in there. When we get big, we slow down. So what's it going to do? It's going to loft. It's going to get over the top of the gap. And it's going to get into our fullback's hand. But that ball's going to go where you go, how you go. So we do it one of two ways, because the protection is what the protection is. So if we were to run this off of inside zone, it would be 122 naked pin crush, right? If we do it off our outside zone, our outside zone is 28. It's 128 naked pin crush. It doesn't really change for the offensive line. The only thing that changes is their aiming points from the run game, right? Whether it's play side number or play side outside shoulder pad. Next, we'll do some different things off the, the jet read that Coach was talking about earlier. Um, it's our gap scheme, okay? We keep the protection really simple on this. You know, when we're running jet power read, jet read, and all that fun stuff, it's a gap down double principle. Okay? Whether we run power read, whether we run power, whether we run counter, it's a gap scheme, right? A gap scheme is what a gap scheme is. It's gap down double. We're kicking out the first man outside our in-man in power with a fullback, right? We're kicking out the first man outside our in-man of counter with a guard. We're reading the first man outside our in-man on power read. But everything, everybody else is gap down double. If you have a guy in your gap, block him. If you don't, he, by the time our tackle gets there, that guy still is in the area. So, hey, the old thing goes, is once you draw him, you ride him, man. We're not gonna, oh, I'm blocking this guy, but I'm not supposed to, so then I'm gonna let go. No, man, you draw him, you ride him, because that muddies the water for everybody else. Because there's probably a guy coming from depth that can make you right, okay? 
So here we are, we're running out of uh, three by one. We're motioning the guy from the field back to the boundary. And we'll do some different things. And I know somebody <coughs> mentioned and asked some questions about how you get tag stuff with the receivers, how you block it, and that kind of stuff. Oh, we, we will. You know, like this was tagged with crack. So we were going to try to crack this guy. He, he got there before a receiver did. Now, I would like the receiver just to keep going to the next guy. He doesn't. He kind of gets caught in no man's land. Not good by the guard pulling. Don't touch that guy, man. Do not touch that guy. But you can see our tackle, our left tackle, he's going to the area, right? He ain't catching that guy's band coverage. Yep. Sure as I won't catch that safety. So here we are, we're running the football play into the boundary a little bit. We're keeping the backside tight end in. The first one that we run off this guy's off the action is what if we start with our 122 seams? We do the same thing off this, guys. It's our seam concept. Now, where we put the guys is irrelevant. It's where they end up that's relevant. They know what their landmarks are. So we're, now we're in trips. Hey, my landmark's bottom of the numbers. Stay out of the lawn. Hey, my landmark is this opposite hash. Common sense tells me I'm not going to get to this other landmark from here. Now your landmark is two yards outside the hash. We want this guy to work vertical and then bend it over. You can't bend it over right now. There will be some stuff. I don't know if it's on here where we game plan it or you know, we're going right now based on how they're playing power read and that kind of stuff. What we tell this guy, the number three receiver, you clear guys, look. Once you clear a guy, look. Whether it's a safety, whether it's a linebacker, whatever it might be, once you clear, look. Reason being is a quarterback, that's who he's reading. He's ready to throw. What we read on this guy is the field safety. All right? So this is the field safety right here. Is he vertical with number two? Yep, where's three? He's vertical. Vertical for two, where's three? <laughs> As we get to the protection here, everybody's back. Nice job by the tackle, taking care of a level one defender. We can, depending on how they're playing, steal a guy with our tailback. Now, we're back, we're back, we're back. We're pulling, we're kicking, right? We're stealing on the backside. Now with our tailback, same thing. Hey, we're zippering this protection together. You're coming from depth to make your guard right, like we talked about with him on the back side of the, the inside zone protection. All right? If we know that you know they're not second containing with linebackers and that kind of stuff, there are some times where we'll say, hey, this week, bud, glance for protection. If it's not there, we need an outlet. We need an outlet. That's kind of game by game. Running the same thing. Now we're running out of trace. Okay? We're running out of 12 personnel. You know, trips ace. We're keeping the backside tight end for protection. He's got this landmark, 18 yards outside the hash. He's bottom the numbers on the scene. We're running three the field safety, right? He's at us. Right? He's coming at us. There's a guy over two. Where's three? There he is. Not good by the guard, right? Not good by the guard. Who's he at the block? First man outside, our inmate. Our inmate, the first guy, not the second guy. I'd rather have you on the defensive end, the running back on the linebacker, than you on a linebacker, and now obviously nobody on the defensive end, right? Great job by the quarterback staring down the gun barrel, right? 
Now, you know, you don't, you don't want your quarterback to get hit and all that kind of stuff. They wear helmet and shoulder pads, too. But it's not good by the guard. Because if he takes the five technique like he's supposed to, you can see his path and track is too wide initially. He's not digging it out. He's not inside out pocket protection. And the back can fit off it and make it right. That's my question. Go. Yep. This is horrible by the quarterback. Okay. And it's not good by our number two receiver. And your landmark is bottom of the numbers. Or excuse me, two yards outside the hash. Once you get there, get vertical on it, right? He should be throwing it because the safety's where? The field safety's outside. Where's three? Covered. I mean, that safety's running to the pylon to defend the favor. <coughs> I don't blame him either because I have no idea what that corner is doing. Obviously, staring in the back of the cut. Hit. So, as we look at the protection, we're keeping the tight end on the back side. You can run it without the tight end on the back side, but yeah, squeeze tight your game plan. I, I don't like it. Just because it condenses the back side, we're not moving with pocketing with the short edge of the back side. But well, you can see here our tailback, he's out. He's the outlet. The quarterback's wrong. He's he, he, he <coughs> down three too long. But sometimes, you know, I just make plays. Make it look good. And we didn't get into power pass. Um, we block it very, very similar. We do some different things with our concepts, getting pullbacks out and, and that kind of stuff. Um,